Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So I want to talk about a video that's been making the rounds the past day and a half or so as I record this. It's Optimus falling. And yeah, it's unfortunate that Optimus fell, but the story is a little bit bigger, both in terms of safety and in terms of public perception and in terms of teleoperation versus actual AI controlled activity. So I'm going to start with this post from Six. If there was any question that Optimus uses teleop for their robots, here one clearly has a guy take the headset off and it falls over. Absolutely hilarious though. And unfortunately, the video is very, very small. It's like really, really low resolution. I've already stretched it quite big to get it as big as this, but anyway, we can watch this a couple of times and see what's going on. Oh. Boom. So that's it, and it's also very, very short. So I'm gonna turn the sound off. You can tell there's not that much to see. But basically, if we watch this more or less frame at a time by holding the arrow key down, you can see at first that it sort of knocks into all these bottles of water, and it's been handing out water. I'll give you context in just a minute. And then you can definitely see that the operator, it, it pretty obvious the operator is taking off some sort of VR headset and when he does that he looks up and the robot I don't know I mean it really doesn't make any attempt to recover so it's almost like the robot glitches out at this point it like looks up when he takes the headset off and it's possible that maybe what's going on is that it's still tracking the headset and the headset is moving backwards so if I turn sideways a little bit if you think about it this way right I'll try to talk anyway you take the headset off and you imagine like if your head was attached to that it would keep going backwards and backwards I don't know if you've ever done martial arts but one of the really interesting things about martial arts is you can take your thumb and stick it underneath somebody's chin and you can just force them to fall down. It, it does not take much of the head to be moved back before you actually fall down. And here you can see that basic motion here. So if we go back, right, so it's like headset coming off and as the headset comes off, it's like the head just continues going backwards and backwards and backwards. And then, but the weird part is it doesn't take any steps or anything to go back, right? It doesn't try any kind of recovery. So it's almost like the robot just sort of, I don't know, it just loses contact with what's going on. There's kind of a glitch out and it just is boom, that's it. That's all that we got. So one more time in real time here, right? Headset comes off and it falls over. There's also a, a little bit of dangerousness here, I guess, if we want to back this up just a little bit right there. So it knocks over a bottle of water. And then when it takes off the headset, right there, you can see that it actually is knocking, sorry, this thing's in the way. You can see it's actually knocking a, a, the bottle hard enough that it's actually spraying water out. And that takes a pretty severe punch to get one of those plastic bottles of water to actually, you know, to have the top pop off. And so that gets us into the context of this whole thing. And this is from Scott Walter. He posted it, and I'm not exactly sure where he got it. But if we watch this, and again, I'll turn the sound down because the sound is not that important to what's going on here. But anyway, this video is 26 seconds, and you can see it's from the same type of event. It's the same lighting and everything everything, but definitely the scenario is different here because we've got different bottles of water in different places. So I don't know if it was a different night, if it was an earlier time or whatever's going on. But if we watch this, the important part of this video is it looks like it's in slow motion a little bit, but this guy is just staring right at it. He's right on top of this Optimus. And that is a, a, a distinctly concerning type of event. And Scott Walter calls this out, but you can see that he's serving people, you know, liquids. He's giving them bottles of water but there's a person behind it directly as this is going on and that's that's if that route robot had fallen over right then it could easily have injured this person and again if we go here and we watch this right there you can see that spray of water so it definitely the arms were flailing and of course the robots about 150 pounds so if it had fallen over onto this guy it could easily have injured him well 2025 is almost over and a lot of us are doing that thing where we tell ourselves i'll start in january new goals new habits new skills except most people don't actually start and meanwhile ai ended up being one of the most in-demand skills of 2025 according to the world economic forum but here's the thing you don't don't need January 1st to make a new start. You've still got a month left to learn AI and walk into 2026 a more valuable, more employable version of yourself. And you can do it in just two days. Let me tell you about the two-day live AI mastermind by Outskill, the world's first fully AI-focused education platform. It's happening this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time each day. And right now they're running a special holiday offer so you can get in completely free instead of the usual $300. 
$5. That's right, completely free. Outskill is rated 4.9 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and this 16-hour experience has already been taken by over 10 million professionals across marketing, finance, engineering, and data, all mentored directly by AI experts from companies like Microsoft and NVIDIA. And here's what makes it special. This isn't a learn 10 tools kind of course. It's about rewiring the way you work. You'll learn how to use AI to simplify daily tasks, build AI agents that plan, create, and automate your workflows, design automations that connect sheets, notions, CRMs, etc., saving you hours every week, and walk away with ready-to-use systems for your job, business, or freelance work. Plus, Outskill doesn't stop at teaching you skills. They teach you how to monetize them. Their learners have built AI-powered side businesses that generate four to $5,000 per week. That's not a typo. And if you attend both days, you also get over $5,000 in bonuses, including the Prompt Bible, a roadmap to monetize AI, and a personalized AI toolkit builder. Honestly, this is the perfect holiday gift to yourself or to someone you know who needs a career boost going into 2026. Seats are limited, so grab your free spot using the link in the description and pinned comment, and join the WhatsApp community so you don't miss any updates before the big weekend. And now let's get back to it. And of course, Scott calls this out. He said, Tesla security should either do their job and keep curious members of the public from getting so dangerously close. Very, very true. Remember, this is a this is a this is a beta robot here. This is not something that's out there in the world at this point. Or they should install crowd control security belts around the table. It's when you get complacent that accidents happening. And clearly this could have been a bad accident. But even beyond that, in the version that we saw that does happen here, there is what there's definitely a person here. It's unknown whether that's a Tesla employee or not. They are wearing a black shirt. And then over here, it looks like this is probably not a Tesla employee. It looks like a person is grabbing a bottle of water as this Tesla bot is, is having the headset removed. So a bunch of questions follow from this. The first one is really, why did it fall over when the person took the headset off? Actually, even before that, why did the person take the headset off? If he was controlling the Optimus, it seems like there should have been some sort of protocol or something to dissociate the Optimus from the person who was teleoperating it. That seems like an obvious thing that would have happened. Maybe that failed and maybe they thought that Optimus had gone to kind of a standby mode or something like that and the person took it off so another person could put it on and then it fell over. I don't know. But anyway, clearly that was a failure. The second part of this is that there were people very, very close to this Optimus. Now, being on the other side of the table is relatively more safe, right? He's handing the water bottles to people across the table. That is probably okay. But where this guy was in this either earlier that evening or a different evening with the same type of events, this is very, very dangerous standing behind the robot when it's not really paying attention to you. So that's the second problem. And then the third problem is that Elon and Tesla have been a little bit coy about telling us when the Optimus is being teleoperated versus being AI operated. And Elon has said on several occasions it was AI operated in certain circumstances, but this certainly seems to indicate that it is being teleoperated here. Not that that's a problem. Again, you're collecting data, you're teleoperating it. It's safer to teleoperate when you're around people than it is to AI operate it because it could do something random like fall over or something. But it would be helpful for Tesla to be a little bit more forthcoming about that. So if you haven't seen it, Scott Walter and I actually talked about Optimus running recently. If you haven't seen that video, it's up here. So there's been a lot of improvements in terms of walking stability, in terms of manipulation of objects, and definitely the running clip shows a lot of improvement. But still, we've got an early product here that is not quite ready for prime time quite clearly. Clearly, there's a problem with balance and control under specific types of perturbation and or the robot just completely glitched out and stopped. And unfortunately, it failed in a position where it was unable to maintain its balance. It just fell over backwards. We've also clearly got incomplete autonomy. We've got latency between the operator and the robot if it is being teleoperated. But again, that's probably not that big. And clearly, the safety protocols of keeping the robot upright and balanced under all circumstances are not working 100% of the time if it falls over. Now, to be completely fair, these bots fall over all the time in lab conditions where they're learning new things and teleoperation is data collection. So all of that is perfectly valid. But at least if it's being operated in a public situation like this, it seems like it needs some sort of fail safe where at least it would sort of crouch down and gracefully fall rather than fall backwards like this because it could be dangerous. If that person had been kneeling behind that robot at that time, that would have cracked his head a good one, right? 150 pounds falling on you of hard plastic and stuff would not be a good thing. And the other piece of this puzzle, of course, is that this is really important to 
Tesla's future. Elon and Tesla itself have talked about how Optimus will eventually make up 80% of their market for the company. So it's a really big deal that this actually works right, and you don't want any kind of public failures, and especially not something where there could potentially be a lawsuit to happen because that could delay Tesla's progress for months or years and put them well behind the competition. They're already running a really, really hard race against companies like Unitree and Figure and Aptronic, etc., that are working really, really hard to create these humanoid robots. And in some ways, they're more advanced than what Tesla is at this point. So Tesla definitely does not want to take a chance of moving backwards or having to stand still while these other companies can continue going. So while the fall itself is not that big a deal, the implications of it and the potential for something really bad to have happened is definitely a big deal. And they need to take a lot more care about all of this. And of course, finally, there's the PR, the public relations aspect of this. Is the bot being teleoperated? Is it AI operating? Why did it fall over? Why was it almost definitely being teleoperated? I mean, this is a human motion of taking something off of your face. Tesla could stand to be a lot more transparent about how they're operating the robot at any given time, whether it's AI operation or it's being teleoperated. Again, there's no problem with teleoperation. It's data collection. It's perfectly valid to give the robot priors to train it, to help it learn new things. All of that is fine. You just have to identify it. You don't want to imply very strongly that the robot is operating in an AI fashion when actually it's being teleoperated. So is this the end of the world for Optimus and Tesla? Obviously not. It's not that big of a deal and it turned out to be okay. But the eyebrow raising part of this was not the fact that it falls over because they fall over all the time, like I said in the lab, while they're working on things. It's the setting, it's the crowd proximity, it's the apparent teleoperation of it, and the fact that somehow as the teleoperator disconnected from the robot, that that was the point at which it fell over. And that is a little concerning because it seems like there should be some sort of protocol, some sort of fail safe in place so that when the teleoperator finishes operation and takes off the helmet, no matter what the circumstances, the bot goes into some sort of fail safe mode and doesn't fall over. It's able to maintain its balance and stand upright. So fortunately, this didn't turn out to be worse than it was. It just turned out to be a little bit of a, an embarrassment to Tesla. It didn't turn out to be anything really, really bad. But of course, it could have turned out to be much worse. And so Tesla obviously needs to be a little bit more careful about the proximity of humans to what are obviously still very early humanoid robots. And it's not just Tesla, again, it's everybody. And to be fair, a lot of Chinese companies have been putting out robots that are doing kung fu with people and stuff like that. And also to be fair, Elon Musk said specifically that the kung fu fight with Jared Leto that happened at the opening of Tron was AI operated. So he did come out and say that. I would have guessed that anyway, because it looked like it was repeating sort of a pattern that it had learned. And so the PR possibilities of a robot like this being out in public are huge. But the PR nightmare, if it fails publicly like this did, can be quite embarrassing, but much, much worse would be if somebody got injured during this. That could put Tesla behind by a long period of time, by months or years behind these other companies. And right now, they really don't want to put themselves into that sort of position. So hopefully Tesla will take this into account and will think about all of this stuff a lot more carefully in the future and have a little bit tighter control to make sure people are not behind the robot. They're only in carefully controlled spaces like in front of the robot where it's probably not going to fall over and hurt anybody. But I hope they don't go too overboard and stop all of these public demos because they are really cool. And again, they're really good public relations kinds of things and can get people very hyped up about the future of humanoid robots and of Optimus. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Did I miss anything? Is there more context to this? Do you have some ideas about exactly why Optimus would fall over at that particular time? Definitely let me know about all of that down in the comments. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps other people to find it. And consider subscribing for more of this kind of content because, hey, that's how this channel grows. And so thank you very much for that. And finally, a big thanks once again to Outskill for sponsoring this episode. Be sure to check the link in the description to get a free ticket to this weekend's live AI mastermind. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.